I must be losing it. Traded in a perfectly good M&P shield towards a Glock 43. This of course is the Talo edition with the Ameriglo night sights installed. Thought I'd just show you real quick. The front sight does glow pretty nice. Uh, the back sights or the rear sights are just blacked out. It's a U notch. But you can see it pretty decent, even in the dark. There's how they look in normal lighting. You can kind of see the rear sights are kind of U-shaped. You got a red circle up front, and inside of the red circle is where it glows. Now I know some people are probably thinking it's stupid to trade an M&P shield for a Glock 43. Uh, a lot of the bigger YouTube channel, YouTube gun channels would pretty much tell you the shield is the superior gun. Uh, it's cheaper and it holds more rounds. Uh, I can't dispute that. But keep in mind I was trading in a shield in 40 caliber. So the capacity is the same as the Glock with the flush fit magazine. And uh, believe me, I was very tempted to go ahead and get the performance center shield in nine millimeter because I do have a, have a holster for shields. I know that the uh, performance center shield, supposedly they've improved the trigger some, but uh, I just wanted something a little different and uh, I've never had a pistol with night sights before and uh, just wanted to just see what that's all about. In my opinion, there's a few things the 43 does better than the shield. Number one, just my opinion though, the trigger is noticeably better. I mean, it's not as heavy, it's more crisp, less creepy. Um, I just like the trigger way better than, in this than the shield trigger. Uh, the the slide stop is much easier to depress and the sh with the shield you gotta really mash that thing when you go to put a fresh mag in and reload even though that's not the tactical way to do it and uh, the magazines they just load way easier I had to uh, mash pretty hard to get rounds into the 40 caliber magazine anyway and this is just a little perk and it's probably just my opinion but i feel like the grip is just slightly less slippery with the glock just slightly both the shield and the glock leave something to be something to be desired with the grip but um I mean, I, I feel like I have a good hold on this and uh, my hands aren't so huge that my pinky dangles, I can actually get all three fingers on there, even with the flush magazine. A couple more ways the Glock 43, for me, wins over the Shield 40 is, of course, weight. The uh, Glock 43 unloaded, I believe it's 17 ounces in the the shield is 19 ounces, so two ounce savings there. And the uh, magazines are a little bit lighter. Concealment, the 43 definitely wins. Uh, as a lot of you probably know, the thing that prints the most is the end of the grip. And the end of the grip is definitely shorter on the Glock 43 compared to the shield, even with the extended magazine. It's still shorter than the shield. And in my case, reliability actually. Uh, I haven't shot a ton of rounds through the Glock 43 yet, but I would say a little over 200 and not a single hiccup at all. With the uh, shield 40, 40 caliber, I noticed it pretty much will not shoot Perfecta ammo. It really doesn't like Perfecta for some reason. And I did have a few 
uh, failure to feed with other types of ammo, that it was mostly reliable, but uh, definitely far from perfect. And I can without a doubt say, even after shooting this gun just a little bit, I uh, definitely shoot the 43 better than I shoot the uh, M&P Shield 40. Just for fun here and just for your information, the Glock 43 will not go into a shield holster. Um, I think the shield is a little more tapered down right here. And I think the trigger guard on the Glock is just a little bigger and it's more square. Where the shield is pretty rounded off right here. Uh, I don't know why they didn't do like they did with the Glock 26 and kind of round this off. They left it very square. It'd look a little better if, the, if they rounded it off, I think. And please don't take this video as me trying to bash the 9mm shield. Uh, probably if I had bought the 9mm shield in the first place, I wouldn't have traded it in. I would have just kept it. Um, it's just when you get into teeny tiny guns like this, you probably want 9mm, I mean 9mm maximum, or maybe even 380. Uh, 40 caliber, you know, it's alright, but you probably want that in a full size gun, or at least a little bit bigger and heavier gun. Why I bought the shield and 40 caliber I don't really have a good explanation I guess I thought it would be cool to have one gun in every major caliber of semi-auto but uh, I would not recommend a 40 caliber in a small gun a friend of mine actually bought the Springfield XDS in 45 at, right at the same time or near the same time that I got the Shield and 40 Smith and Wesson, and I was able to shoot both of them back to back. And the, believe it or not, the Shield and 40 actually was more snappy than the XDS 45. I mean, noticeably so. And we both noticed it and we agreed that there was just more recoil with that 40 in the, the small guns. Basically what I'm saying is I guess I'm done with 40 Smith & Wesson altogether. If I want something that kicks hard, I'll get a 10mm. Uh, but I can definitely shoot 9mm better, and I believe I can shoot 45 better than 40. So just for fun real quick, these are my Glocks. These are all the Glocks I have. Got the Glock 21 also, and that's the... Uh, factory threaded barrel on there and that is the SF the short frame so we got one of the smallest Glocks and one of the biggest Glocks and here's a little size comparison it's funny though the trigger guard and the trigger are pretty much the same also the Gen 3 21 you'll notice says Austria and the 43 of course is a Gen 4 it says USA and on the other side it says made in Georgia so I don't actually have a proper holster for the Lock 43 yet um, I've got it in a I have been carrying it I've been carrying it in this Uncle Mike's size 12 holster. I know these are like the worst holsters in the world and um, I've bought a few Uncle Mike's holsters in the past, or not Uncle Mike's, uh, these are PJ holsters in the past and I like them a lot. They're super fast to put on and take off and they're very low profile but uh, I'd love to hear suggestions if any of y'all are carrying Glock 43's what do you suggest for a holster? Love to hear it. I'll show you a little bit of shooting with it now. Uh, I shot blazer, brass, 115 grain full metal jacket through it. Uh, Precision 1, 115 grain full metal jacket. Uh, 
spear gold dot 124 grain plus p jacketed hollow points and federal 115 grain jacketed hollow points through it and no hiccups nice here's what I get, just got with the uh, Glock 43 two magazines worth uh, from about eight or nine yards uh, pretty decent decently small group there I was shooting for the number seven and one flyer over there so not not too bad yeah pretty small group Got a spear gold dot, 124 grain, plus P, hollow point, and try to capture it in one of those three jugs. Oh, it helps when you put one in the chamber. Damn, that soaked me so bad. <laughs> okay, so it obliterated one. Pretty awesome. Two. All right, looks like we went through that one too. Three. Is it in there? Let's see. Dang, where'd it go? Oh, it, okay, it went through three jugs. Wow. Let's see if I can do this. Show you what the sight picture looks like with the uh, Ameriglows. We'll try this. More gold dots. Left-handed. <laughs> Got it. I'll line it up with the camera here. Man, this has got some punch. <laughs> Sweet.